So on the previous video, we left off right here we're talking about the ETC and um, basically the idea being that you create such a strong potential or electrochemical gradient of hydrogen ions on the inner membrane space that all of these hydrogen ions want to go ahead and jump inside but they can't because the membrane is selective against charged particles. So they are forced to go through a channel that acts like a little turbine that as it spins produces ATP. Notice that the turbine is on the matrix side of the, of the mitochondria and the ATP is produced over here. All right, And so that's ATP production is called chemoosmosis because it has something to do with the diffusion of, of these hydrogen ions across the membrane across this, along this potential that's generated by these pumps, constantly pumping hydrogens into the inner membrane space. And now remember that these pumps are powered by the um, electron carriers produced during the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, the NADHs and FADH2, which are going to go ahead and power that. Now for each NADH, three of these pumps will be powered. For each of the um, FADHs, two of the pumps will be powered. So that means since you have 10 NADHs doing the, uh, the whole process until now, and you have two FADHs, so you have 10 NADHs and two FADHs, and you're going to make three, so you're going to do this times three here, and then this will be times two, that means you're going to pump in three protons for, ev for everyone and two protons for everyone, and that, that's going to cause the DNA uh, ATP synthetase to spin and create a total of 30 ATPs out of the uh, NADHs and four ATPs out of the FADHs, so that by the time the ETC is done, you're going to have 34 more ATP. Now, you had two produced during the um, glycolysis, but those two were consumed during grooming, so you were back to zero. Now, by the use of the two NADHs produced during glycolysis, the four, the, the four NADHs produced, uh, sorry, the two NADHs produced during grooming, and then the 10 NADHs produced during, uh, the six NADHs produced during the um, crab cycle to a total of 10, plus the two FADHs produced in the carbon cycle, you now make 34 ATPs for a total of 36 when you add the two that were produced during the Krebs cycle. So when all of a sudden done, the cell creates 36 ATPs from each glucose molecule if it uses the mitochondria in this aerobic process. Now it's called aerobic because of that oxygen that is necessary down here in the end for the production of the ATP molecule. So that's how our cells are going to go ahead and make energy. And um, notice that I have different versions of this ETC up here. So it will show you the complicated version up here that shows you all the complex proteins and everything that's going on. And then the overall picture of what's happening inside the mitochondria with the pumps pumping things out and the ATP synthetase putting, uh, allowing things in and then the Krebs cycle on the inside. Also remember that the matrix has a high pH of 8 compared to the low pH of the inner membrane space, which is 10,000 times more acidic, which means 10,000 times more hydrogen ions, all because of these pumps. And then that creates this potential, this dam full of, that when the doors are open, trap, the water gushes through those canals and spins the ATP synthetase turbine to generate energy. There's a video about this on the web tutorial on the website that you should watch to see the magic of, uh, of the mitochondria and how this works. Now, I want you to point out too that, um, let's do a review then of the whole thing. But before we do that, oops, I almost forgot. If the cell doesn't have oxygen, what then? Then the grooming process shuts down. All these enzymes that do the grooming process shut down and they don't allow the cell to, to go into the Krebs cycle. Uh, because there's no oxygen at the end on the ETC to do anything with those electron carriers. So it's kind of a waste. So instead, what the cell does is it takes the glucose, destroys it into pyruvate, and then it takes the pyruvate, uses the, the trucks or the NADHs produced during the glucose uh, glycolysis process, and then it's going to go ahead and convert that to lactate or lactic acid, which is what causes cramps when you... Uh, don't breathe or don't get the, your lungs and your heart can pump fast enough to get the oxygen fast enough to your cells. Your cells are starved for oxygen and they start going desperate and they want to use this pyruvate for something. And so to get a little more energy out of this because you make an extra 
two eight, uh, extra two ATPs by getting those two pure evades and converting, you get two more ATPs down here. So the cell gets a total of four, two doing glycolysis plus two doing the uh, um, fermentation is what this is called to create this. But then the cell has to spend more energy to get rid of the lactic acid later and you get cramps because the cell is um, uh, accumulating this acid inside the, in the muscles. So it's, it's not a good long-term survival thing, especially when you need 10 million ATPs per minute, per second, sorry. Uh, it's more of an emergency thing if you don't run out of oxygen. But um, and it's also is present in yeast. And in yeast, instead of lactic acid, they make ethanol, which actually has one less carbon than pyruvate does because pyruvate is a three-carbon molecule and ethanol is a two-carbon molecule. And so you're going to release carbon dioxide during this process. And since it's two pyruvates, you're going to make two um, carbon dioxides. And that's why uh, when you put yeast in bread, the bread grows. And when you put yeast in, in, uh, in uh, drinks like beer, you may get the fizz or the carbon dioxide. And it's this fermentation process that also makes the ethanol that's present in beer and, and in um, wine. And today we actually accelerate the fermentation process. Uh, with the heat to make sure that this is all done faster or we let it sit over long periods of time and let the wine age and ferment to get to the perfect taste but remember then uh, that t technically when you make bread you're making ethanol somewhere in the bread too now not too much though so you wouldn't have to eat a lot of bread to get to the same effect of a wine glass but technically we've been using fermentation through centuries through, through yeast to make bread and wine for us all right so well, wow. this is what the cell does as an emergency thing, yeast fermentation or lactic acid fermentation, depending on if you're an animal or yeast. Now, let's put this all together and review the process of, of cellular respiration. So, first, the sequence, glycolysis, and then if you have air, you're going to go into the Krebs cycle through the grooming phase and then ETC. If you don't have air, you go into the fermentation. So you can see that in this drawing over here, that in the presence of air, I mean, um, in the mat in, in matrix, you're going to go do the Krebs cycle, and then you do the ETC, which is actually produces a lot of ATP. Uh, in the fermentation process, is when you don't have oxygen. Okay. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention when I did the Krebs cycle in the previous video, is that in so I'm not going to go back and show you that. So hold on. A is that when you actually do the Krebs cycle, notice that you have to go ahead and recharge oxaloacetate, which means you're not going to completely destroy the glucose by an acetyl thing. Some of it has to be recharged, present, so you can reconstruct the 4 molecule oxaloacetate. That's part of the reason we mentioned before in the first video why not some of the energy that's present in glucose is not actually released, okay? Back to this uh, graph that shows us the, the overall view of the process, also understand the difference between aerobic and anaerobic. Everything that happens inside the mitochondria is considered aerobic, although only the ETC itself actually consumes oxygen, all right? The anaerobic will be fermentation and glycolysis, which happens in the cytosol. Also, location of the process. You got to know that the glycolysis and fermentation will all happen in the, in, um, the cytosol or the cytoplasm, and then the grooming will happen as it enters the mitochondria, and then the, e the Krebs cycle happens in the matrix, and the ETC in the cristae membrane, all right? Which means if I ask you where is the most of the pyruvate in the cell, you would say in the cytoplasm. Where is most of the glucose in the cell? You say in the cytoplasm. Where is most of the, most of the acetylcholine in the cell? You would say in the, in the my matrix, because that's what's going to accumulate after grooming. Where is most of the oxaloacetate or the citric acid? In the matrix, which is this, all this Krebs cycle is happening, all right? And where do those electron carriers get converted to ATP? In the cristae, those membranes inside the mitochondria. So all of these things are important. Also, energy production or consumption. Remember that during the glycolysis, you actually consume uh, ATP, too, during the investment phase. But then you, the payoff gives you more than that, and so you end up getting two uh, ATPs. Also, ATP is consumed again in the grooming phase, the mitochondrial text, uh, which puts you back to zero. But then the Krebs cycle makes two more, and then the ETC converts all those electron carriers, uh, the NADH plus the FADH and the ADH produced during the Krebs cycle into the energy of the ATP. So the, it's the ETC that produces the most energy. So if you put this in a thing, 
by the time glycolysis is gone, you, you get a plus 2. But remember, that's actually negative 2 plus 4, making it better 2. The grooming will consume the plus 2, you back to 0. The Krebs cycle makes plus 2 more, and then the NADH from here plus the NADH from the Krebs cycle and the FDH all go to the ETC, which is going to be converted to 34 ATP. 30 from NADs and 4 from FADs. Remember, FADs uh, have there are less of them and they also power less pumps. Okay? So, also, remember that if you go into fermentation, the that were produced are used to convert the pyruvate into lact lactic acid. All right? And recharge the ADH, which is going to be recharged back in here. So, this is uh, only uh, in case of emergency. All right? So, and this whole process here will only produce 4 ATP compared to the 36 ATP which you would get on the other side because remember you get plus 2 from here plus 34 from here you're going to get a 36 total with you, if the mitochondria all right now carbon dioxide production where is the carbon dioxide production in this whole thing um carbon dioxide is produced here in fermentation if you're yeast if you're an animal you don't make carbon dioxide because you make lactic acid not ethanol ethanol is 2c lactic Acid is 3C, same as pyruvate, no carbon dioxide. But doing grooming, you're going to do one carbon dioxide per pyruvate. So you actually make two because it's two pyruvates from each glucose. Remember that. It's two pyruvates per glucose. You make two carbon dioxide. During the Krebs cycle, you make two carbon dioxide per acetyl-CoA. So you're going to go ahead and get a total of four carbon dioxide here. And that's there produced during the formula. Remember six carbon dioxides? All right. So there is no carbon dioxide production anywhere else. Oxygen consumption. Where is the oxygen consumption here? Nowhere except at the ETC, where the oxygen acts as the electron acceptor that is going to be the end of the electron transfer chain. So if the trucks are the beginning of the ladder, as the electrons cast down the ETC, it is oxygen that receives them in the end to combine with the hydrogen's presence in the lumen or the intermembrane space and then form water. And that's where the water is produced then. And remember, since you have tents, and two fads, and each carries two electrons, that's a total of 12 electrons, six water molecules, two, o two electrons per oxygen. So that's all adds up. So you say make six water molecules. Now, um, that's the only place where water is also produced, the, the ETC, where oxygen is consumed. Substrate lava phosphorylation versus oxidative relation or chemiosmosis. This is where the phosphorylation happens through the uh, turbine. ATP produce here um, or doing glycolysis or doing fission is substrate level because it's through enzymes in a liquid medium instead of it being through the diffusion of protons down the electropotential gradient. Also, remember the role of oxygen is to consume those extra um, electrons and be the final electron acceptor at the end of all of this. And then the role of glucose, which is being, which is being the electron donor, all right? So that means uh, glucose is being um, oxidized while oxygen is being reduced. And that's the whole story, right? Now, the only last thing we have to cover here is that this whole thing would not happen if you did not have enzymes. And then enzymes throughout this process can be turned on and off. If you have too much ATP, that, then this right here, glycolysis, will be shut down. So basically, the enzymes that are doing, destroying glucose are deactivated by too much ATP. So it's almost like an excess of ATP causes the glycolysis to go down. So that's called negative feedback. When the allosteric inhibition, the ATP binds to the enzymes and tells them, basically, there's too much of me here, stop glycolysis. Save the glucose for when it's needed. So all of this is controlled through enzymes, all right? If there's no oxygen, then... Another control right here stops this and sends the process into fermentation. So this is all controlled through enzymes. Also, the idea that this process is universal. Glycolysis is pretty much in every single life form there is, which is an indication that evolved early on in life. All right, Every single life form pretty much does glycolysis, which uh, one way or the other, and indicates that this process evolved very early in the evolutionary process. All right? So I just need one more, maybe two-minute video to, to clarify one more point, and we're going to pick it up from there and finish our cell respiration topic.